in the morning of joy. Ready or not, here I come. That is more than just an announcement for a child's game. If it were a child's game, no big deal. But when we're talking about the Lord saying, in, a sen- in essence, ready or not, here I come, it is a big deal. And so the second coming falls into what's commonly called the doctrine of eschatology. It's a big fancy word, and it just means the doctrine of last things. Uh, last things deal with death, the second coming, the judgment of all people, and our eternal destiny, heaven or hell. If you're wondering why this should interest you, it should interest you because it applies to you. It applies to every one of us, as a matter of fact. Uh, We all will die, or else we'll be alive when Jesus comes again. And so we're going to be a part of that, whether dead or alive. Then we all will stand before the Lord and give an account of ourselves in judgment. And then, according to Matthew 25, we'll all will be welcomed into the presence of God or will be rejected from His presence, heaven or hell. What we're going to focus on tonight is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, primarily chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. But you probably already know from having read passages like that that it, this passage has to do with this part of eschatology that we sometimes call the second coming. Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5, those two chapters in particular, because there were people in those days that apparently had some questions about those things or they didn't understand some of those things the way that Paul thought they should understand them. As a matter of fact, in in writing this epistle, he is writing to answer these things and to prepare them for these things. What you should also know about Paul as he writes to the the people at Thessalonica, the church of the Thessalonians, what you should know about Paul's writing to them is that he really cared for them. He was really concerned. As a matter of fact, he wrote to them just like you might write a letter to one of your children. That's the vested interest he had in them. If you look at 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, he says, But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you have become dear to us. And then if you skip down a few verses, notice verse 11, he says, as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children. So just as a mother cares for her children, just as a father cares for his children, Paul cared for the church of the Thessalonians in that same way obviously he was looking out for their best good he wanted what was right for them he wanted what was good for them and especially in regards to the topic that we're going to talk about tonight that is the second coming so when paul comes to second thessalonians or rather first thessalonians chapters four and five he really is writing especially to address things concerning the second coming And there are three important things he wants to address to them in these two chapters. Number one, he wants them to be sanctified or set apart or to be ready for the second coming. The only way to be ready for the second coming is to be sanctified or set apart, prepared for the second coming. That's 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 12. He also, secondly, wants them to be informed about it and in doing so comforted because of that. There is comfort to be had in an understanding, a good knowledge of the second coming. That's 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. If you're just looking at that passage, you might note that you probably have heard that read at funerals from time to time. And then he also, in chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, where we want to put down some stakes and study tonight, he is writing to them to make sure that they're ready 
for the second coming. If the Lord were to say, ready or not, here I come, Paul wanted them to be ready for that. Now, by all means, we know that Jesus said he was coming again, but he also noted it's an uncertain time. Jesus said that, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. Paul was not saying, I know when the Lord's coming. He would agree with Jesus, but he was saying to them, you need to be prepared and you need to be ready for his coming. And so um, I think if you really want to know how you should feel about the second coming, it could be broken down into one of two words. And so this is the outline of 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. Your attitude about the second coming probably falls into one of two categories. You probably are going to associate it with dread and fear, or the word night, or you're going to associate it with the word day, and you're going to have hope, and you're going to be looking forward to it. Now, most of the time when we hear something about the second coming, I think it's quite natural because of the uncertainty of it and because of it's something that none of us have ever experienced. The same way that we feel about death, maybe the same way we feel about judgment, it's, it's a matter of it's scary to us because we don't understand it in that we haven't experienced it. And maybe sometimes it's because we just don't have the, the right knowledge of it. And so tonight, especially speaking to a group of dedicated Christians here at Waterview on a Sunday evening, I want you, when you hear the second coming, I want you to not think of it as something that you should fear. I want you to think of it as something that is good and something that will be positive. And that is what you'll see unfolding as Paul writes to those of the church of the Thessalonians. As a matter of fact, he writes to them, I think, for the same reason I'm preaching to you tonight, and that is you don't have to fear this. You don't have to dread it. There are some reasons you might dread it and fear it, but there are other ways to avoid having that fear and to be ready for it. And so that is what 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11 concerns. We're going to break it down into those two things. It's either about the night or it's either about the light or the day. So first of all, he describes the second coming in view of how there will be some that aren't going to be prepared for it. That's in verses 1 through 3. Let's, let's read those verses together right now. He says, Concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. And when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. And so what he is saying to them is, you already know these things. He's writing to them as a matter of reminding them of these things. That is what teaching and preaching often does. It's not like we're plowing new ground every time we teach or preach. It's sometimes it's just a reminder of, you know this, but you need to be reminded of this, and you need to review this. And so he's saying to them, here is a description of what it's going to be like when the Lord comes for those who aren't ready, for those who aren't prepared, for those who are living like it is the night, or like it's the dark. And he compares the second coming to three things number one he says it will be like a thief in the night verse two you probably have read the almost exact terminology in second peter chapter three and verse 10 where it says the day of the lord will be will come like a thief in the night if you knew a thief was coming you would be prepared correct if you knew someone was coming you would be prepared now most of the time they come at night or when you're not expecting them to come if you knew they were coming you would not be caught off guard you would be prepared but most people don't know when a thief's coming they're not expecting it and they are caught off guard that's one description of how it will be for those who are living like the night or living in darkness for when the lord comes again it will be like a thief in the night secondly the second coming will be like an overconfident person. 
Notice he says in verse 3 that they will say. Now, you know, when, when we say, well, they say, who are we talking about? Well, we're talking about what the majority of people say. So that's, you know, Paul is using accommodative language here in verse 3 when he says, you know, when people say, when you hear others say, when, when they say peace and safety, then he says sudden destruction comes upon them. It sounds like that Paul is saying the second coming of the Lord for those who are not ready for it, for those who are living in darkness, is going to be like what happens to an overconfident person. They've reached this point where they think it's not going to happen, where, where they think that you know, things are just they're continuing the way they are, and there's no reasonable evidence to suggest that things are going to be any different. And you can go read in 2 Peter Again, chapter 3, where that is exactly dressed. The, the idea of how things continue, Peter addresses there. And the idea of how time just seems to go on, he addresses that there as well concerning this very topic, the second coming, the end of the world. But it, I, thought, I find it very interesting, though, that, that Peter, or rather Paul, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says that there are going to be people to say, peace and safety as if you can predict when the second coming of the lord will happen i find it interesting that most of the time today when people try to predict when the lord's going to come they point toward troublesome times they point toward difficult times they they point toward a lot of our modern times and and they say you know it's it's going to be when things are difficult when there's a a lot of division it's going to be when there there isn't peace and the inspired writer i don't think is giving us a hint at when the second coming is going to be but he just notes that it could very well be at a time when there is peace and safety when nobody's concerned about it and the real message here is for those who are living like the darkness in the night it's going to be like an overconfident person not being prepared for destruction and then the third thing is the second coming is going to be like a pregnant lady's labor pains you can see that in the latter part of verse three now a pregnant woman knows she's pregnant but she'll be rocking on for several months and then all of a sudden seemingly out of nowhere she has the labor pains that's how sudden this is going to be so all three of these comparisons to how it will be when the lord returns is really a warning for the unprepared it's a warning for those who aren't thinking about the end of time they aren't thinking about the doctrine of eschatology they're probably not thinking about their own mortality the fact that they will die one day and that when they do die that eventually the lord will come again they'll be raised or resurrected from the grave and they'll go stand before the lord and to give an account for their lives those are true things according to the word of god that's going to happen but people who live according to the darkness don't think about those things very often they're not spiritually minded they're not people of the light they're not following after the light and so therefore these things will be a surprise to them all three of these comparisons remind us why we ought to be ready for the second coming because it will be like a thief therefore it will be unannounced thieves don't call ahead and say oh by the way i'm going to break into your house tonight that's just not the way it works so it's going to be like a thief in the night it will be unannounced it will be like someone who thinks it's a safe time it will be unexpected and it will be like a woman who is pregnant with the labor pains coming it's inescapable those are the that's what the second coming will be like for those who are not prepared for those who are not uh, living according to jesus and in the light that's why they are living in darkness notice if you're going back to the text here first thessalonians chapter 5 notice verses 4 and 5 they kind of serve as that transition between those who are of the darkness and those who are of the light he says but you brethren are not in darkness because they were christians you are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief you don't have to worry about it being like a thief in the light because you're not in darkness you're not living according to the darkness verse 5 
you are all sons of light and sons of the day we are not of the night or of darkness so when it comes to the second coming you don't have to worry about the the the, the analogies of it being like something that happens at night like a thief coming at night when no one is expecting it you don't you're not overconfident because you know it's going to happen it's a reality you're not like the the woman who's pregnant that just has all of a sudden starts having labor pains unexpectedly you don't have to be caught off guard by any of these things paul is saying because you're christians you're of the light you ought to be confident when it comes to the second coming and that's why i'm saying this to you tonight there's no fear if you're living for Jesus when it comes to the second coming. And so that's the second part of this text. Beginning there at about verse 6 and going down through verse 11, there are four things that I think make the second coming something that we should not fear, something that we should have confidence in. The scary thing about the second coming is for those who aren't prepared and who aren't ready. But if we're the sons of light, we are prepared and we are ready and there are these four realizations number one we're aware of it we are aware of it look at verse number uh, verses number uh, six and seven he says therefore let us not sleep as others do but let us watch and be sober for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk are drunk at night he's again playing off this analogy of the day and the night and when is it that you go to sleep you go to sleep at night and you're unaware of what's happening he says but we're not of the night we are of the day we are of the sons of light and so therefore we are aware of the reality of the second coming and it should never catch us off guard when it happens the second thing he says we are armed look at verse 8 he says but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a a helmet the hope of salvation i imagine that that reminds you of the terminology and the language in ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 19 where the armor of god is discussed and this is just a, a, a mini description of that what paul is saying is not only are you aware because you're of sons of the day and sons of the light you know the second coming is going to happen but all the while you are armed and you're prepared for anyone who might try to cause you to not be ready for that you are armed as children of god and then the third thing he says in verses 9 and 10 you are also appointed look at verses 9 and 10 he says for god did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our lord jesus christ who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with him we're not appointed for wrath or for destruction we are appointed to obtain salvation through our lord and savior jesus christ that is significant if you're a christian it means you're in a protective relationship with the one who's coming back he's the one that's coming back he's going to know his own we're not appointed to be destroyed at his second coming if you flip over probably one page in your bible to second thessalonians uh, chapter one these are the words that describe what it will be like for some during the second coming in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know god on those who do not obey the gospel of our lord jesus christ these shall be punished from the everlasting destruction shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed we are in the light and we are the ones in verse 10 when he comes the lord will be glorified in us and will be admired by us why because of what he says here in verses 9 and 10 we're not appointed for wrath we are appointed to obtain salvation through our lord and savior jesus christ we're appointed to go live with him therefore we do not fear and then the fourth thing not only are we aware 
and armed and appointed. But, verse 11, we can be at ease. We can be at ease. Why? Because we comfort each other and we edify each other. He says, just as you also are doing. The church looks out for each other. We are in this together. We are huddled even right now as we speak in preparation for the time when the Lord Jesus will come again. And just by our coming together, we edify and we encourage one another. We should not only do that when we assemble, and we do do that when we assemble, but we should do that at other times. We should be looking out for each other. You, you are my keeper. I am your keeper. We are our brother's keeper. And so we are constantly watching out for each other, encouraging each other, edifying each other. And when we do that, when the church acts like the church, we don't have to be afraid about the second coming. We can be at ease about the second coming. And so it's just as simple as the day and the night. That's what Paul is basically saying. If you are of the night, then you're going to be frightened because it's just like a thief coming in the night. It's like that overconfident person that thinks nothing bad can ever happen. Or it's like the woman who's pregnant that's going to all of a sudden have the labor pains. That's how the second coming will be for those who aren't ready. Those who are ready, those who, who are prepared, why should we be afraid? Because we're aware of this, we're armed for this, we are appointed for salvation with our Savior Jesus, and we're encouraging each other. Therefore, we can be at ease about this. We can be confident about this. To be ready for Jesus in the day that He comes is the most important thing you can ever prepare for. And there are two ways to know that you're preparing right now. Number one, you're being in the Word. And number two, you're being in the church. Being in the Word means you're putting on the breastplate of faith and love. You can't do that without the Word. It's through the Word that you have faith and you learn the right kind of love. You're in the Word and you're in the church of God because it's in the church of God that we do these things to prepare and to encourage each other to be ready when the Lord comes. Ready or not, here I come. No reason to fear if you're a Christian. If you're ready for Him, keep staying ready for Him. If you are not ready for Him, if you need to be baptized or if you have sin in your life and you want the prayers of the church this is why we offer the invitation of jesus at the end of a lesson like this and if we can help you why don't you come right now as we stand and as we sing when the trumpet of the 